This is how the Dixie 5 looks like when you start it up for the first time. In the middle we have the main window where all the various editors run. On the left hand side we will see the project structure containing devices and data. And the window on the right hand side contains all material which we normally drag and drop onto the main window. Going online with the device, we can, for example, test the device or get process data. In this tutorial, we configure a small substation and therefore concentrate on the offline part. Such a configuration is handled in a so-called offline project, which we easily create clicking on New Project. In the project tree on the left hand side, we now see the project name and some editors we will use in the following steps. In order to give an overview of the used devices and their connection to the primary equipment, Dixie 5 provides a new feature, the single line editor, which we open by clicking on the first symbol in the project tree. Here, with a few moves, we can draw the bus bar and our first feeder, the cable feeder, using the elements of the library, like disconnector, circuit breaker or current transformer. As you can see, the various elements of the feeder are inserted by dragging and dropping them into our workspace. It makes sense to rename the feeder immediately according to our project. If we now want to add a Ciprotec 5 device, we can start the insert procedure directly in the single line editor, dragging the device symbol into the workspace. A dialog opens where we enter a product code, which we can read either on the type label of a device or get it from the online configurator, an online tool in the internet, which is designed to help you to find the right device configuration. The short code coming out of this configurator is created to describe a certain device in a short and convenient way. Dixie 5 verifies the product code and, if valid, gives access to the next entries. Selecting a so-called application template in the next block, we get a pre-configured selection of functions, which is adapted to certain applications. For example, a template for non-directional overcurrent directional overcurrent or capacitor bank protection. With this, we get a good starting base for the configuration of such an application. We select the template non-directional for currents for voltages and see later which protection functions are already included. Selecting the communication version, Dixie now creates the configuration. Now we see the 7SJ85 next to the cable feeder and inside the device we see some groups like disconnector, circuit breaker, voltage current 3 phase. CProtect 5 groups all functions in so-called function groups. These are like containers for a certain type of functions and each function group represents a certain element on the primary side, like a disconnector or a circuit breaker. The container hosting all protection functions for our cable is called voltage current 3 phase, which is a function group where we can insert all functions which need 3 phase currents and or voltages. In our selected application template, only the overcurrent protection functions are so far included. We can now link our device to the primary equipment in the cable feeder. Two disconnectors coming from the application template which is designed for a double bus bar not required, so we simply delete them.
Finally, we add missing functions, the overload protection and the negative sequence current protection into the function group voltage current three phase and the breaker failure into the function group circuit breaker. If you want to see the settings of a stage, just double click on it and you have direct access to it. All the functions can be renamed using the properties window on the bottom of the page. So you can give speaking names to your complete configuration. The single line editor does not help only to have an overview of how a device is connected to the primary equipment but also shows what is inside the device.